Hey guys, welcome to the video today. Um, we're going to have a look at tra uh, fitness training principles. So there's quite a lot of these to remember. Um, the easiest way to remember a lot of them is the SIDOF acronym. So SIDOF stands for Specificity, Intensity, Duration, Overload and Frequency. And they're the main training uh, principles that we'll be looking at. And then there's a few others that are still quite important. Um, and their individuality, diminishing returns, uh, variety, maintenance, and detraining. And then there's three other little sort of um, concepts that we don't necessarily need to study in depth, but they're handy to know anyway. And that's tapering, periodization, and peaking. And they've got to do with how a training program is actually um, constructed. So we'll start off with specificity. Um, and so that's basically uh, replicating um, what you do in your sport um, into your training program. So for example, if you um, participated in a sport that was um, going to heavily use the leg muscle groups, um, then you wouldn't go and do an activity that uses your arms in your training program as much. So for example, if you're a long distance runner, you're not going to look at doing, um, say, muscular endurance training in your biceps, for example, because they're not the key muscle groups that you need to focus on. You'd be looking more at doing um, local muscular endurance in the legs, so for example, squats. All right, so intensity is just basically how um, intense your training sessions are throughout the program, and normally they're measured at a percentage of maximum heart rate. So for example, anything between say 70 and 85% max heart rate will be aerobic, um, 85 to 95 would be anaerobic, and then 95 and above will be the highest intensity, and that's using the ATP PC energy system. Right, duration is just looking at the length of one particular training session or the length of an entire training program. So for example, you might have a training session that may go for 45 minutes or you might have a training program that say goes for six weeks. Okay, overload is um, looking at how to improve over time. So it's otherwise known as progressive overload. So what will happen is throughout the training program, um, you will gradually increase, say, the intensity. Um, you might increase uh, the number of sets or reps that you're doing. Um, you might increase the weight that you're lifting, those sorts of things. Um, so you should never increase more than one particular thing at a time. And you should never increase it by 10% because it's, um, it's sort of seen to be too much for the body to handle and that you'll actually um, negatively train then if you do too much. So you only work up little bits at a time, it's quite progressive. Um, every couple of weeks you wait for your body to adapt and then you increase again. Right, frequency is uh, just the number of training sessions that you'll do each week. Um, and there is a set amount, um, generally we say that you shouldn't be training um, any less than three times a week to improve on a particular fitness component. Um, but generally people will want to train more than that because they'll see better returns. Um, but it's thought that if you train for a minimum of three times a week, you'll probably see um, improvements, but minimum improvements. Okay, so then individuality is looking at um, making sure a training program actually meets the needs of that particular athlete. Um, you're not going to make a swimmer train mainly on a bike or on a rowing machine. You're going to get them into the pool and do laps. Um, you're also going to look at their individual requirements such as their workload, so um, actually going to work. Um, not all athletes are full-time athletes, a lot of them have day jobs. So making sure that a training program fits in with um, their work, also their family commitments if they have some and also just their general capabilities. I mean, there's no point making a training program that overworks an athlete uh, because they'll resent it in the end. So making sure that um, a training program caters for all of their um, needs. And diminishing returns is an interesting one. Um, it's basically saying that the fitter you become, the harder it is to get better. So your body will eventually have a maximum point or a plateau that it will reach and you basically can't get much better than that at all. So um, some athletes, for example, will do sprint training 
they will increase or sorry decrease their time so increase their improvements over time and eventually they will get um, less and less improvements so they may only be shaving off um, milliseconds or hundredths of seconds so um, in the end their improvements will be smaller and smaller and you'll be able to see them less and less and that's called a diminishing return so you get less and less returns out of your training um, but it's the ones that sort of have a, a higher point to reach that will end up being the best okay so variety is just making sure that the athlete doesn't get bored um, or unmotivated I mean it's pretty boring if you make a training program and all it is is two different types of exercise that's really boring. Um, so you make sure you um, change it up a lot, make sure that there's different focuses each week, um, make sure that the activities are different or perhaps um, even the amount of the activities that you do. Um, and even if you're training just one particular fitness component, find about five or six different activities to train that fitness component because then it stays interesting and then the athlete will want to actually continue training because it keeps them motivated. Right, maintenance is just looking at um, someone that wants to just maintain a level of fitness. So for example, if they um, have achieved a particular level of fitness, say in the cardiovascular area, um, and it's not really important to keep, main, uh, to keep um, getting um, improvements in their times, and they're just looking to keep what they've got, um, they can actually just simply um, train twice a week and they'll maintain those improvements if they let them go um, if they stop training obviously they'll lose the fitness so you just need to maintain and that's training twice a week right D training um, is also known as reversibility so it's um, what I just mentioned which is the loss of training once you stop so you've got a graph there and it shows really well what's going on so you've got the muscle glycogen levels in um, swimmers and then untrained people. Now we know that through aerobic training that you increase glycogen levels in muscle. So starting off in week zero, you've had um, a swimmer who's been training a lot and they've built up the glycogen levels and then you've got an untrained person who's just got a baseline of glycogen levels. Now obviously the untrained person's glycogen levels don't change, they haven't been doing anything, but the swimmer's glycogen levels will drop back down. So it only takes one month for them to go back to near normal levels, uh, which is very, very rapid. I mean, you can see in the graph that the biggest change is between zero and one weeks. So um, it drops down, that looks like to be about, I don't know, 25%. Um, so that's a lot of training that's been lost. So uh, with elite athletes, um, it's important to recognize that um, their training programs have to be all year round. Um, and it doesn't have to be always focusing on improvements. If you can focus on maintenance, then those great losses won't be, or won't happen, sorry. Okay, tapering is um, sort of where the athlete slows down a little bit. So they um, reduce their training volume, so they don't do as many sessions. Um, they'll keep the intensity, um, but it allows for them to sort of recover in between. So um, they're sort of going to taper off just before an event, so if they're um, allowing extra time for recovery, they get to preserve the carbohydrates they need for the competition, um, but they're still getting that intensity in there. And um, also they're um, just letting their body settle and rest and um, be fully prepared for an event. So tapering means that the training volume, so how many times a week, that will drop off, but um, they still keep the intensity within those training sessions. Right, periodization is looking at um, making sure training schedules match when particular competitions come around. So uh, the AFL season is a perfect example of this. AFL players will um, train quite heavily and they will um, keep training throughout the season and then um, post season they'll have a little bit of a break and then pre-season they'll really train quite hard um, trying to boost all of their um, muscular power, their aerobic capacity, their anaerobic capacity. They'll work really hard on key fitness components um, and bring that back up to a level that satisfies the pre-season. They'll play throughout the pre-season and then they'll get into the actual season. So 
their training intensities will tr um, will differ throughout the year. Obviously, throughout the year, they're getting matches in, so that will contribute to part of their fitness, so they can drop off a little bit throughout the year. Right, so peaking is when um, it's making sure a person is um, perfectly prepared for an event. So um, the Tour de France, for example, is a major event. Um, all the coaches of those cycling teams would have made sure that those athletes were in prime condition for that particular event because it's one of the biggest races of the year. So um, this not only means physical, but it also means emotional um, and mental. It looks at diet, um, carb loading, that sort of thing. So making sure that athlete is in the best possible condition to perform. Um, obviously, if an athlete is going in injured, or they're not um, mentally confident, uh, those sort of things, and they're not going to be able to perform at their peak. So a coach needs to make sure that they're well-rounded and that they're well-rested before an event actually comes up. All right, so I've got a picture here of what peaking should look like um, in terms of an athlete. So you've got uh, a preparatory phase, that means they're just getting ready. Um, then you've got a competitive phase, and then there may be a main competition within that season, um, like I said, the cycling, um, because they're racing a lot of, uh, during a lot of the year, but there are key competitions that they need to prepare for. So a lot of the minor competitions will also be included as um, preparation for this main competition. And you can see where I've put the purple circle there. Um, that's where the main competition is, and that's where the athletes should be peaking. If they peak... Um, just before or just after the competition, then they haven't been able to do, or they haven't been able to perform at their maximum. Um, and then obviously that they, they're they not going to win in that way. So it's a, it's a very fine art um, and the better coaches will perfect it better. All right, so just in summary, again, um, you've got the SIDOF acronym there. So specificity, intensity, duration, overload, and frequency. And then you've got the other um, more minor concepts, so individuality, diminishing returns, variety, maintenance, detraining, and then the three um, to do with the scheduling of the program, so tapering, periodization, and peaking. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.